In this screencast, I will illustrate some functionality in Inkscape version 0.46 for desktop publishing. Desktop publishing, for those who don't know, is very similar to word processing except that it's made for page layout. In other words, it's a what you see is what you get page editor. That means it's flexible, allowing one to move elements such as images and text boxes, for example, among other objects on the page with relative ease without being constrained by the document itself. Several of the more popular desktop publishing applications include the freely available and open source Scribus, which I highly recommend, Adobe's InDesign, and Quark Express. Makeshift applications can be used, like OpenOffice for one, but one would be better off sticking with Scribus for something a little more robust and flexible. Now that I have briefly explained what desktop publishing is and what software to use, why in the heck would anybody want to use a vector application like Inkscape? Well, because you can. But it must be understood that Inkscape wasn't and so far isn't intended to be used as a publisher of sorts. On the other hand, page layout is something that Inkscape does very well. So if one can keep the page layout rather simple, and I emphasize the word simple, then why not use Inkscape for desktop publishing? After all, many of us have used Inkscape to completely mock up websites, so perhaps it makes sense to use it to some extent to lay out your next newsletter or brochure design. Let's take a look at what Inkscape allows us to do. What I intend to demonstrate is a basic page design in an attempt to plant the seed and show you what can be done. If you're crafty, and I think you are, then maybe you can take uh, what I will show you to the next level. So let's begin. All right, the first thing that we're going to do when we open up Inkscape is we're going to set up our document. And I'm going to go to File, Document Properties, slide this back into the window here, and I'm going to select U.S. Letter, I'm going to select Portrait, hit OK here. Oops. Okay, we'll get that on our page, okay? Now this is the page layout of uh, your actual page okay so what I'm gonna do next is uh, I forgot something so let's go back into document properties and let's set up our units to inches that way we can see eight and a half by eleven and a half here and I'm gonna set up my units here to inches as well okay now what I'm gonna do is draw a page and I'll draw it the same size as my page here Okay, so this is going to be eight and a half by eleven. And I'll select my align and distribute button and I'll select page and we'll center that on our page. We get something about like this. Okay, I'm gonna make this background just a little bit lighter. Okay, and the next thing I'm gonna do is right click on this and I'm gonna hit duplicate. I'll make this a little darker so we can see it. And I'm going to do uh, a path inset. Okay, I'm going to do that a couple times. A few times, actually. You know what? I think I'm going to do something a little differently here. Let's back up. And let's make this, instead of insetting it, let's... Uh, what we need to do is simulate a, a margin around here. So I'm going to go ahead and change this to seven and a half wide by 10. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and take this, center that on our page. Okay. So basically what I've done is I've come in a half an inch all the way around our page and that's going to simulate our margin. So what I'm going to do now is uh, select this dark gray rectangle and I'm going to go to object and do objects to guides. Okay, that's going to convert my um, rectangle, rectangle into uh, guide markers here. Okay, now let's carry on. Um, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make... Um, two columns okay so I'll go ahead and snap on this corner and drag it all the way down and I'm gonna make this column 
3.60 wide. Okay, and I'm going to duplicate that and slide one over to the other side. Okay, and just snap that to my borders. Okay, and that gives me a, uh, a channel down through the middle. All right, now the next thing that I'm wanting to do is uh, let's duplicate this and slide this up and this gives this a uh, dark color and I'm gonna make this about one and a half high okay and since I have a guide here I can just pull that down and it'll snap okay that'll become a text header for me and what we're gonna do next is just pull this down and I'm just gonna fudge it uh, until I get the channel kind of the same size here and it's close enough should be good enough just for this screencast if you want to get it perfect on your document then uh, please do so okay now I think that looks pretty good so the next thing that I'm going to do is uh, bring in a couple images okay now normally when you're uh, doing desktop publishing you've got images to bring in um, so I'll bring in my first image and it's always important that when working with images, no matter if you're working with vector applications or raster applications, that you scale down and not up. Okay, so my image is a little big right now. And what I'm going to do is hold down my aspect ratio, my lock button, and I'm going to make this 3.60 wide. Okay, and I'm going to snap that back. Now I'm going to take this gray rectangle and we're going to drive it down just a little bit and I'm going to make it about the same I'm going to get that white channel in through here zoom back up on this okay so far so good now what I'm going to do is uh, bring in my second image nice picture of some money and I'm gonna make this image we're gonna lock its aspect ratio and I'm gonna make this image about 2.875 wide okay and we're gonna stick that somewhere down here but before I do that I need to get its height here let's see 1.917 okay now what I'm gonna do is just tidy that up a little bit change its aspect ratio just a touch so we got good even numbers and I'm gonna make a square rectangle actually and we're gonna make it 2.875 by 1.9 so that's the same size as our picture okay now what I'm gonna do we're gonna make this a little bit bigger now and I think probably the best way to do that is to let's do this let's zoom in on this I'm just gonna fudge this instead of trying to dial in the right numbers okay so what I'm gonna do is hold my control key down to keep its aspect ratio and we'll make that picture we'll send it to the top so we can kinda see what's going on here okay and it's a little wide so what I'm gonna do is bump this down in the corner get something about like that okay just kinda eye in how this thing will look okay I think that looks pretty good and we'll zoom out a little bit here okay now for our next step zoom back in on our page and just for now I'm gonna go ahead and tidy this up we'll center it up okay and I'm going to duplicate this and let's say we wanted our picture about right here just a little off center okay now what I'm gonna do 
is duplicate this twice. And I'll show you where I'm going with this. Okay, so I'm going to select this. I'm going to select this rectangle over here. We're going to do a path and we're going to do a difference. Okay, to make sure you got it right, let's just move it off and I've cut a hole through it. It's exactly what I want. I'll do it on this side over here. Path, difference. And I've got a hole on that side as well. Now what I'm going to do is take our picture, take our square right here, we'll put that in the middle, and we'll take this background and lower it so we can see what's going on. Actually, we don't even need that anymore. So let's get rid of it for now. Okay, and that's where my picture is going to go. Now, I have to explain something. Basically what I have here, the dark gray is going to be my text layout on both sides here. Now, typically when you cut something from another shape, it's gone. It's destructive. Um, one nice thing about um, the upcoming version of Inkscape, version 0 0.47, which you can grab a development release right now and test it, is they have a live path effect with Boolean operations. So in this next version, you're going to be able to cut shapes from one another in a non-destructive way so you can get back to the history. So if you cut something and later on in your project you decide, boy, I really didn't want to cut that after all, you can uh, turn off that effect and uh, your shape will be back to where it was. That will be a nice little effect to have uh, on, a little, on page layout such as what we're doing right now. Okay, so basically what I've done is it is destructive, but, uh, uh, you know, we can move it just by moving the nodes here. You do have nodes, so you can select these things and, and move them up or down, back and forth, and just make sure that you do equal steps on the other side. Okay, but we won't dwell on that anymore. Let, let's just carry on. So anyways, I'm going to take this here, and uh, we'll get rid of that. And let's put some text on this. I'm going to put some header text. And we need to write something here. So uh, let me think here. Let's just come up with something here. typos in here and anybody that knows me knows that I'm the king of typos okay how to make money from that great idea well that's not the best header but who cares all right and uh, let's give it some uh, let's change its text properties and let's find something that looks a little pleasing um, I've always liked Georgia Let's see here. Let's go back into text properties and let's make sure that it is centered. Okay. And let's see if we can fit that in there. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, let's go back into our text properties. Let's add a little bit more. And maybe this isn't the greatest grammar in the world, but I think you guys get the point. Let's apply that. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Nice and centered. Okay. Let's center it up on our uh, 
dark background here. Okay, and if it's not quite right, what we can do is take this and let's just bump it up a little bit. Dial that back in. Oops, there we go. Okay, I think I got it right. And we're going to take this and just make it just a little bit longer here. Okay, now, if you want, you can take this background. We'll make it just a little bit darker there. And we can pull in elements from our image. You know, if we're looking for... kind of a something that matches here. I think maybe that looks pretty good. We'll go to our fill and stroke and we'll give this a radial blur. It's just a little bit lighter there. Okay. That's just adding some little pizzazz there, and maybe we want to make that text white. Okay, so we got that part. Zoom back out, and we're getting closer here. Okay, and the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to add some text, and one of the effects that we have in Inkscape 0 0.46 is a lorem ipsum um, text generator. So I'm going to go ahead and just, I'll just set that up for eight paragraphs, uh, 16 sentences, uh, four uh, paragraph length fluctuations, uh, and just hit apply. And that takes a second or two. And we're going to slide that text, just slide that text over. And basically, this is placeholder text for those who aren't sure what it is. And it just writes some gibberish um, so you know what kind of text that you're going to going to put in. Um, okay, and what we're going to do now is we're going to select in order from the right side to the left side both these objects and we are going to do text flow into frame. And that'll take just a second or two. Whoops, I got to select my text. There we go. Forgot to do that. Flow into frame. There we go. Okay. Now that's what's nice about uh, Inkscape is that that flow into frame bit there is, is very important. And with it you can make, uh, basically you can kind of set up your margins and stuff. Okay. So we've got that part. Now what we're going to do is adjust our text a little bit. And I'm going to double click in here to get into the text. And we're going to go to our text dialog. Okay, and I'm going to select, let's go about 110% there for spacing. I'll hit apply. And let's pick something a little bit more pleasing. Let's pick this Granada. And we're going to pick Justify the Lines. And we get something that looks just about like this. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this gray outline. We're going to make it a light color. And I'm going to leave that in there in case we want to use that later. Um, but basically what we have here is our layout. Um, what we can add to if uh, you want to just a little bit more pizzazz here, we can go to our text tool and let's just make up something. Okay, we'll make that 
the same font. Find Granada here. And we'll make that italic. And let's put that about right here. It's still a little big yet. There we go. Okay, and let's zoom out on our page. Okay, so, so far we've got something very simple. And basically, that's it. That is our desktop publishing page. Now, I haven't added some of the other features here. Actually, let me, uh, let me turn off my guide so we can see what we're doing. Okay, let me zoom in on this as far as I can get it. Okay, but um, basically what I have here, I have something very, very simple. Okay, now if you can think of this, this might look like something that you'd find in a magazine or something or other. That's basically what we're going for. Um, another thing that you, you want to keep in mind when you're uh, making these layouts is your text spacing around objects. Normally, maybe you wouldn't want to put it so big like I have here. I've, I've given myself plenty of space, but you don't want to crowd your text up against something either. Um, a nice little feature, too, is uh, the start of your sentences. Usually you have a uh, capitalized uh, letter that's big. Uh, you can add that effect in Inkscape very well. Uh, I'm not going to show you that now. It's just something that just takes a little longer in a screencast. Um, but again, uh, you know, for a brochure or, or something that you want to mock up or lay out, Inkscape does very well. And um, it, it's pretty powerful at that. You don't have text styles. That's something that you'd have in uh, something like Scribus or, or other desktop publishers. Uh, that's a very powerful feature, uh, textiles. But, you know, for, for what we do have, it's, um, it's plenty. So that is desktop publishing in Inkscape. So I hope you enjoyed this screencast. I'm HeathenX.